Hello friends, welcome to Sunil Engineering Academy. This is a Bharat friends. Today in this video we are going to see about the Alexander the Great and his invasion in India friends. Okay, so here before the Alexander the Great, before Alexander invasion in India he came to India in 326 friends okay so before that there are some Persians who came to India friends before knowing the Persians and Alexanders and everything we should know the geographical location from where these people are coming so if you think that this is India please bear with me I'm not good in artist so uh, this is a present day Pakistan this is uh, Afghanistan and there is Iraq Iran and everything friends and Middle East here comes the Macedonian Empire which is very small when compared to the Persia Persia is present-day Iran Iraq and Afghanistan friends so some part of the India that is the some part of India is that is the Gandhara the Punjab was under the Persian kings friends how how does they conquered that the Cyrus king who ruled from 588 BC to 530 BC conquered the northwestern part of India friends not only Cyrus but also the king Darius one of uh, the king of Persia also invaded annexed Punjab and west of Indus and Sindh friends okay usually there was a war there there used to be a war between Macedonian Empire and Persian Empire friends so these two people uh, fight and usually the power will change from one ha one hand to the other hand but what happened there comes a son of a king called Alexander from Macedonian Empire and with the very least people like 50,000 army he attacks the Persia where Persia is very very big and no way it, it is going to be defeated but it he it is the motivation of the Alexander and the determination of the Alexander that made him to defeat the Persia at that time the king Darius IV was defeated and he conquered the Persia which is the greatest kingdom at the time of of nearly 4th century friends 4th century BC friends okay so after uh, conquering the Persia he got the Gandhara region and the Punjab region of India so he went till this play this borders of India and he thought of conquering the India for the sake of gold and the the culture to know the culture and everything friends okay so what happened is that while he came to this place there was a kingdom called there was a king called Ambi ruling Taksasila Taxila and he was called a textiles in Greek language friends okay he was readily submitted to Alexander before waging a war after hearing that Alexander the Great is coming and he conquered Persia which is the largest kingdom in the world at that time so he readily submitted or surrendered himself to the Alexander friends which is a very very a pity thing that happened friends actually he was in war with the porous porous is nothing but the purushottam purushottam the adjacent king there was a war between porous and purushottam and ambi ambi was very weak when compared to the purushottam friends so he thought that if he join hands with the alexander then it will be very easy for him for him to defeat Porus. that's what happened when Alexander came to India friends okay so 
next comes the porous while so what happened is that alexander along with ambi alexander and ambi faces porous at the river banks of zelam at the river banks of zelam zelam one side there was a porous army the other side it was ambi and alexander's army that is the first time alexander's and his army facing a very huge army of elephantry friends elephantry elephant army they have never seen such an army where elephants were used in the battlefield but alexander with the help of ambi he took the suggestion that to face this elephant is to hit by their eyes friends so what he did is that he took some people and crossed the river without knowing without the knowledge of porus and attacked from the right side and he attacked his army attacked the eyes of the elephant these elephant trampled his their own army of soldiers and the porus got defeated friends but uh, he was almost defeated alexander was almost defeated and he was impressed by the bravery of porus and he gave back the kingdom friends later on after defeating porus he went towards the east to conquer the magadha or at that time ruling nanda dynasty friends nanda dynasty but there was a river ganges and they came to know that the magadha empire was very very huge it is said that for alexander army refused to go to further east fearing the mighty nanda empire because there were some spies or they came to know that they were told that the kings of nanda that is nandas and gandharites and prayasi in the greek language they were called nandas were called in these names were awaiting with 80000 horsemen that is cavalry and 200000 footmen 80000 chariots and 6000 fighting elephants friends 6000 6000 is very very huge huge number friends actually porus has got only 200 to somewhere around 500 elephants even these el- to face these elephants itself they they have seen near to death friends they were near to death and they were very very lucky to win the war with porus but facing 6000 number of fighting elephants is impossible for them and alexander army refused to go further to east friends actually they there was a revolt inside the army and they were almost uh, almost i think 10 10 to 15 years or around 10 years uh, they were away from their home friends actually alexander dean tell that they are, they are going for the conquest of india he took the army by saying that we are going to Uh, defeat persia after defeating persia they came to porus and they they fought with the porus after porus uh, purushottam after defeating Pur- purushottam alexander was pushing them to go further to east but within them uh, knowing that they will be defeated and they will be killed within the alexander armies they were almost tired and they were revolting uh, against the against their leader and they have become homesick friends so after all this alexander decided to get back to the babylonia actually alexander himself was was injured while while battling with the porus friends he got some arrows nearby his heart friends okay so all this causes alexander to get back to the macedonia but he dies in between at the babylon friends on the way to his macedonia he dies the 
Babylon friends in 323 BC friends okay in 327 BC in 327 in 325 sorry friends in 325 BC after the war of uh, in 326 he has uh, the Hydaspus war and later on he dies in the next year friends okay so after after his death he the the Seleucus Nicator was appointed as the general over the Indian territory which he was conquered and later on how Chandragupta Maurya and what is the relation between Chandragupta Maurya and Seleucus Nicator we will see in the further classes but now aftermath of Alexander's invasion what happened we have to see friends so impact of Alexander's invasion if you see what is the impact of Alexander's invasion we have to talk about the trade routes trade routes have been opened up from Magadha Empire to directly to Macedonian we, we, he uh, anyone can uh, travel and trade between the Central Asia and Indian subcontinent friends okay that is the first thing the trade routes trade routes have been opened up and Indians have learnt Greek Indians have learnt Greek and also they have learnt about coinages astronomy architecture Greek architecture and sculpturing sculpturing see friends in the arts and culture you will come to know that uh, the very very important bit is that we can see uh, the Greek sculptures Sk Greek sculptures are very much uh, um, masculine in gender friends masculine in nature you can see Apollo Apollo is known for his uh, bodybuilding friends a perfect structure of body so these kind of Greek sculptures was seen in the Gandhara school of art Gandhara school of art whereas Gandhara is in the Indian territory and their sculptures was resembling the Apollo but they actually making the sculpture of Buddha while uh, doing the sculpture of Buddha Buddha was was looked like a bodybuilder and with a perfect body actually Buddha doesn't have uh, that kind of body friends after he was going through the uh, continuous fast uh, and after he's taking the aesthetism no one uh, thinks that he will be having the very built-in body but Gandhara school of art which has the influence of the Greek sculptures they made the Buddha look like a polo or uh, another person like Zeus or some some Greek gods who have a good body structure friends okay so in the art and culture you will come across this how this Greek people or Greek sculpture or architecture influenced the Indian Indian architecture friends okay many Greek settlements were established like Alexander in Kabul and Sindhan nearby Jhelum friends so after Alexander's invasion the Mauryan Empire in that area has expanded a lot with a marriage alliance with the Seleucus Nicator friends later on we will see that in Mauryan Empire what happened uh, the relations between the Seleucus Nicator and the Chandragupta Maurya in historians have left valuable account of Indian geography actually see friends after the invasion of uh, Alexander uh, many Greek Greek historians have wrote about Indian Indian geography Indian history and their social and economic social and economic conditions at the time of Alexander and later Alexander friends by then it has become a very very uh, valuable literary source of the Indian history friends 
so all these have happened because of the alexander's invasion friends so we will see how uh, the parallelly there was a nanda dynasty which was not touched by the which was not touched by the alexander the great alexander the great actually nanda who was ruled which was ruled by dhana nanda was actually feared the alexander friends actually he was he was a phobia kind of person who fears the uh, kings or anyone who comes after him though he has a big very big army he feared alexander actually he feared alexander but the wrath comes in the other way friends we feel that our fate uh, comes from one side but the fate shows up from other side that's what happened to dhananand actually alexander didn't conquer dhananand or killed dhananand but the other person who has come from the forest from the deep forest of the dhananand's empire itself comes the chandragupta maurya chandragupta maurya who was a trained or brain child of chanukya according to his pledge he overthrows dhananand by with the help of chandragupta maurya and he at last he faces the wrath of the fate friends we will see in the next class how mauryan empire has conquered oh, uh, magadha dynasty or overthrown the nanda dynasty and who are the great rulers there are many great rulers like uh, chandragupta maurya bindusara and ashoka ashoka itself eh, takes another video friends how he uh, propagated buddha buddhism on how, what is the incident that changed ashoka totally and what are the welfare measures that ashoka has done and what is ashoka dhamma and everything we will see in the next class friends till then stay tuned to sunil engineering academy don't miss any video hit the bell icon and share this video with your friends friends because many of them will be preparing and there, there are no right sources to prepare for the exam friends so be happy and take care friends thank you bye bye